J.D. Vance was interviewed by Lulu Navarro from the New York Times. I have a clip of it. Uh, I am beyond words. It is, it is beyond my ability to, to explain exactly what's taking place in this country right now that I never thought we would be in a, in a position like this where a former Marine, we held the same rank at one time, Corporal J.D. Vance. A former United States Marine, a, an Ivy League edu educated individual, is going to cape for Donald Trump, is going to stand for Donald Trump, is going to be someone who jettisons any adherence or oath of office or oath to the Constitution to, to protect the Constitution from all enemies foreign and domestic when he is on the ticket with a domestic threat to that very Constitution. And his lust for power is such that he makes excuses. He's asked five separate times, refusing to answer each time, whether or not Donald Trump lost the 2020 election. The election we all witnessed him lose. The election he attempted to overturn by way of overthrowing the country, the government on January 6th. We all watched it. In fact, in this interview, I'm getting ready to play just a brief portion of it. J.D. Vance actually says, yeah, I would have also not certified the election. This is anti-democratic nonsense from one of two major political parties in the country. J.D. Vance, a, a brother in arms, I mean, he wrote press releases for uh, public affairs or whatever. I didn't even know that was a thing. This is dangerous. Here's the clip, let's count them five times that he refuses to answer yes or no as to whether or not Donald Trump lost the election when we all witnessed Donald Trump lose the election. In the debate, you were asked to clarify if you believe Trump lost the 2020 election. Do you believe he lost the 2020 election? I think that Donald Trump and I have both raised a number of issues with the 2020 election, but we're focused on the future. I think there's an obsession here with focusing on 2020. I'm much more worried about what happened after 2020, which is a wide open border, groceries that are unaffordable. And look- Senator, Lulu, yes or no? Okay. Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Well, let me ask you a question. Is it okay that big technology companies censored the Hunter Biden laptop story, which independent analysis have said it cost Donald Trump millions of votes. Senator Vance, I'm going to ask you again, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Did big technology companies censor a story that independent studies have suggested would have cost Trump millions of votes? Senator I think that's Vance, the question. I'm going to ask you again, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? And I've answered election? your question with another question. You answer my question and I'll answer yours. I have asked this question repeatedly. It is something that is very important for the American people to know. There is no proof, legal or otherwise, that Donald Trump did not lose the 2020 you're, election. You're repeating a slogan rather than engaging with what I'm saying, which is that when our own technology firms engage in industrial scale censorship, by the way, backed up by the federal government in a way that independent studies suggest affect the votes, I'm worried about Americans who feel like there were problems in 2020. I'm not worried about this slogan that people throw. Well, every court case went this way. I'm talking about something very discreet, a problem of censorship in this country that I do think affected things in 2020, and more importantly, that led to Kamala Harris's governance, which has screwed this country up in a big way. Senator, would you have certified the election in 2020? Yes or no? I've said that I would have voted against certification because of the concern that I just raised. I think that when you have technology companies- The answer is no. When you have technology companies censoring Americans at a mass scale in a way that again, independent studies have suggested affect the vote, I think that it's right to protest against that, to criticize that, and that's a totally reasonable thing. So the answer is no. So the answer is no. As he whines about the obsession with the past, as though Donald Trump isn't wholly, manifestly obsessed with the past, obsessed with 2020, running his stinky suck about 2020. And by the way, Lulu Navarro there, that's how you hold a liar's feet to the fire. You continue to ask the question, 
maybe you mix it up and change the words a little bit, but you allow the audience to see what is taking place. You don't just move on. It's clear, clear what was taking place there. And it is an obsequious uh, servant that you just witnessed in J.D. Vance. Someone who's so obsessed with his own path to power that he's willing to subject himself to the indignities of worshiping like a, like that, who's the little bald monster character in the Lord of the Rings, the, the Gollum, the, the little, the little f f gooey fish-eating freak. That's J.D. Vance. No dignity. No shame. And it's dangerous for the country because there are millions upon millions upon millions of, of dyed-to-the-wool MAGA supporters, fascist enablers, lovers of it. They can't wait for the boot of the government to rest down swiftly upon their necks. And it'll be J.D. Vance's boot. It'll be Donald Trump's boot. Five times. Anyway, what do you think? I'd love to know. Let's talk about this in the comments. You can leave them below. You can also call, leave me a voicemail, 714-576-4054. And of course, as always, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I appreciate your engagement. We are in unprecedented times in America. I hate when people say that. You've heard me bitch about that saying in the past, that this is the most consequential, important election of our lifetime. And that may, may or may not have been true up until now, but right now, I think it's, it's self-evident that that is the case, that we have fascism knocking on the door. We have anti-democracy knocking on the door. We have a man who attempted to overthrow the United States government in order to stay in power, to remain in power extra-constitutionally, extra-democratically. And now, look, Donald Trump might be a dumb shit with fascistic tendencies and, and instincts, J.D. Vance is a whole nother case. J.D. Vance isn't stupid. He's a smart, he's an intellectual type. He's what we've worried about and warned about. You know, I, I thought it might be like a Josh Hawley, but it certainly takes its form in a J.D. Vance as well. Uh, if you want to help support this work, click the join button below, become a channel member. I pointed over in this direction, but I think it's this direction. <laughs> uh, uh, for two bucks a month, you can become a channel member. You can also go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. If you want to follow me on social media and join and share in the uh, luxurious misery that is social media, I am at Dollamore just about everywhere. I'd love to see you there. That's D-O-L-L-E-M-O-R-E. -E. This is the Mickey Mouse Club, everybody. <laughs> anyway, I love and appreciate you very much. Uh, get your activist boots on because it's going gonna, it's gonna to take all of us. Uh, next month. Be genuine. Take care of one another.